The Young and the Restless Spoilers Monday Full October 14, 2024 A Family in Turmoil, Phyllis, Lucy, and the Shadow of Addiction Phyllis Summers sat across from her granddaughter, Lucy, trying to mask her concern. Lucy had been through a whirlwind of tragedy, and Phyllis, ever the protective matriarch, had hoped that their time together might help the young woman find some peace. The loss of Heather had shaken everyone, but Lucy seemed particularly fragile, her once vibrant spirit dulled by grief. Phyllis offered a gentle smile. I know things have been hard, sweetheart. But you're strong, just like your dad. You can move past this. Don't let the past hold you back. Lucy nodded, though her eyes seemed distant, as if her mind was elsewhere. Phyllis had hoped that their talk might lift some of the weight off Lucy's shoulders, but something was off. There was a tension in the air, something unspoken yet palpable. As they continued talking, Phyllis noticed Lucy subtly reaching into her bag. At first, she thought nothing of it, but when Lucy pulled out a small flask and took a quick sip, Phyllis froze. The realization hit her like a punch to the gut, Lucy was drinking. Again. Lucy, no, Phyllis gasped, her voice tinged with shock and disappointment. You can't keep doing this. Lucy glanced at her grandmother, her expression defiant. It's fine, grandma. Just a drink. It helps me calm down. Phyllis shook her head, her heart sinking. This isn't the way to cope, Lucy. Drinking isn't going to take the pain away. It's only going to hurt you more. Lucy's face hardened, and she pulled the flask closer. I'm fine. You don't need to worry about me. But Phyllis wasn't about to let this slide. She knew all too well the dangers of addiction, having seen how it could destroy lives. I do need to worry. You're my granddaughter, and I love you too much to watch you go down this path. I'm not a child, Lucy snapped, her voice rising. You can't just tell me what to do. I'm not like Dad or Heather. I need this. The mention of Heather made Phyllis flinch. She knew that Lucy was hurting, that the loss of her mother figure had left an enormous void, but turning to alcohol wasn't the answer. I know you miss her, Phyllis said softly, trying to calm the storm that was brewing between them. But this isn't what Heather would have wanted for you. Lucy stood up abruptly, her frustration boiling over. Stop acting like you know what's best for me. I'm not some broken little girl you can fix with a lecture. Just, just leave me alone. Phyllis watched as Lucy stormed out, her heart breaking. She had always prided herself on being able to handle anything life threw her way, but watching Lucy spiral out of control was a challenge she wasn't sure she knew how to face. As much as she wanted to save her granddaughter, Lucy was slipping further away, and Phyllis feared there was nothing she could do to stop it. The increasing tension around Daniel. While Phyllis worried about Lucy, the storm surrounding Daniel's supposed involvement in Heather's death was growing more intense. Nick Newman stood by the belief that Sharon, despite her troubled past, was not the murderer. The more he dug into the details, the more convinced he became that something wasn't right. Sharon didn't kill Heather, Nick said firmly to his sister, Victoria. I know her, and no matter what's happened between us, she's not a killer. Victoria raised an eyebrow, skeptical. You're sure about that? The evidence is pointing pretty clearly toward her, Nick. And now Daniel is being dragged into it. That's exactly my point, Nick countered. Daniel is a good man. He's never been violent, and his marriage to Heather wasn't falling apart. Why would he suddenly snap and kill her? It doesn't make sense. Victoria crossed her arms. Maybe not, but the police seem to think there's more to the story. Chances convinced Daniel's hiding something. Nick shook his head, frustrated. Daniel is being framed. I can feel it. Sharon's being manipulated, and now Daniel is in the crossfire. I need to find out who's pulling the strings before it's too late. Diane's heartbreak, the rift between Jack and Kyle. At the Abbott mansion, Diane Jenkins sat in silence, tears slipping down her cheeks. She had just witnessed another painful confrontation between Jack and Kyle, a scene that had become all too familiar in recent months. 
The once strong bond between father and son had shattered, and Diane feared there was no way to mend it. Jack had been furious with Kyle ever since the Glissade debacle, and his anger showed no signs of subsiding. Kyle, for his part, seemed equally resentful, unable to see past his own mistakes. The betrayal had cut deep on both sides, and neither man was willing to make the first move toward reconciliation. Diane had tried everything she could think of to heal the wounds between them, but nothing had worked. The more she intervened, the more it seemed to push them further apart. Why won't they just talk to each other? Diane whispered to herself, her voice thick with emotion. Why can't they see how much they need each other? She had always dreamed of a future where the Abbott family could be whole again, where Jack and Kyle could stand side by side, running Jabot with the same unity and pride that had defined their family for generations. But now, that dream felt more distant than ever. The bitterness between them seemed irreparable, and it broke Diane's heart to watch it unfold. Kyle had aligned himself with Victor, a decision that Jack could never forgive, and Jack's refusal to see past Kyle's mistakes only deepened the divide. Diane wiped her tears, her mind racing. She couldn't give up, not yet. There had to be a way to bring them back together, to bridge the gap, the gap before it was too late. But with each passing day, the chances of that reconciliation seemed to slip further away. The weight of the Abbott family's fractured relationships hung heavy over Diane, and for the first time, she wondered if their family was beyond saving. This expanded version builds on the emotional complexity of the characters, the struggles of Phyllis to save Lucy, the tensions surrounding Daniel's innocence, and Diane's heartbreak over the broken bond between Jack and Kyle. Let me know if you'd like further developments.